welcome to the final edition of News 6. Today, News 6 is brought to you by the 6th graders of Perry Elementary School in Cartersville, Ohio. Here's Sam Treese with our first story about a very special musical event at Perry Elementary. Sam? Thanks, Stacy. On May 11th, the Perry Elementary Choir will present an operetta. The operetta is called Radio Station KIDS. Mrs. Brown is a music teacher at Perry Elementary, and she is the director of the operetta. She talked with News 6 reporter Ginger Lascava and explained what the operetta is about. She also told Ginger just what is involved in putting an operetta together. The operetta is about a radio station that is on its way under. Because of the programming, they are losing their sponsors, they are losing their listeners, and the boss has informed them that unless something drastic happens at the station, they are all going to lose their jobs. So the plot of the operetta centers around how they are coming up with ideas to remedy the situation. You must believe he's very bad. What is involved in putting together an operetta? When you put an operetta together, you must keep in mind that we are working with elementary age kids in a fifth and sixth grade choir. So I must keep in mind how they sing, their voice qualities, and what they are able to handle socially. You don't want to pick a subject that's too mature for them or likewise a subject that's too immature for them. So it involves, first of all, their singing. And then we must take into consideration for dancing parts, who takes dance lessons and who can move easily. And for speaking parts, we have to take into things, consideration things like who can memorize easily, who can keep their studies up, because I do not want these students to fall behind in their studies in the classroom also. So there are lots of things you have to keep in mind in putting all this together. Mrs. Brown, thank you for letting us talk to you. This is Ginger Loscava reporting for News 6. Figaro, 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 Figaro. Thanks, Ginger. The students from Perry Junior High School have an interesting money-making project. The students have their own greenhouse and is running by student volunteers. Mr. Dave Williams, a science teacher in the junior high, supervises the project. The student volunteers fill the flats with the fertilizer and soil, and they also transplant when necessary. Approximately 65 varieties of flowers and vegetables are grown in the greenhouse. The students plant the seedlings in January, and by May the plants and vegetables are ready for sale. The money they make from this sale is then to used to purchase new seedlings and equipment for the greenhouse. The greenhouse has given many junior high students the chance to learn about growing and selling plants. Thanks, Kathy. Mr. Dick Evans is a big game hunter. He started to hunt when he was a young boy living on a farm in southern Ohio. Mr. Evans has hunted in Africa, the United States, Canada, and Central America. He still hopes to hunt in the Far East. Mr. Evans recently showed News 6 reporters his collection of trophies. He explained that a game hunter doesn't shoot just any animal. Serious hunters are concerned about conservation. They only hunt male animals beyond their reproductive prime. He also talked to News 6 reporter Scott Jones about his experiences as a big game hunter. Mr. Evans, could you tell us what a big game hunter is? That's pretty much what the name implies, Scott. It's uh, an individual, a hunter, who goes out in search of the larger game, whether it's North American game or Africa, as opposed to someone that shoots rabbits and squirrels. Where have you hunted? I've hunted in Alaska a number of times, all across the United States, uh, most of Canada, been to Africa three times. Uh, so I've hunted over a great deal, almost all of North America. So. What animal have you wanted to hunt the most? I guess ever since I was a boy about your age, I think I wanted to go hunt a leopard, and then probably a lion, a big elephant. But I think the animals that I enjoyed hunting the most, that were the biggest challenges, were the sheep, the sheep of North America. 
Uh, remember, there's four of those, and they call those the Grand Slam. What is the most dangerous animal to shoot? Well, most big game hunters will have, everyone will have his own idea. In my opinion, the Cape Buffalo is the most dangerous. I think most everyone will agree that that Cape Buffalo has killed more professional white hunters than any other big game. If you're talking about North America, I think you'd have to put it in the area of one of the bears, either the grizzly or it could be the polar or the Kodiak. Thanks for talking with us, Mr. Evans. This is Scott Jones reporting for News 6. Thanks, Scott. One of the newest forms of dance today is breakdancing. Young dancers all over the United States are trying to master such moves as the moonwalk, the wave, and the spider. News 6 reporters recently visited the Janus School of Dance in Lima, Ohio. There, they watched Joyce Bagley, teach, who teaches breakdancing, demonstrate some of the steps. S some of our News 6 reporters are also students of Miss Bagley, and they joined her in demonstrating the moonwalk, the wave, and the dislocation turns. Miss Bagley also spoke with News 6 reporter Anna Valenti about the different styles of breakdancing and what kind of steps she teaches her students. Break dancing, just like any other dancing, is the dancer's imagination. It originated in New York City where gangs would compete, but they would do it with street dancing or what we know it as break dancing instead of fighting. Are there different styles of break dancing? Basically, yes. The few that I know about are what we call ticking. It's just when you're breaking you break it down into each little part. Instead of doing it smoothly, as we did in class, it's just broken down. Then we have what we call our boogalures. Those are the people who jump from side to side, getting ready for the floor work, what we call spiders, back spins, floor spins. And then you have our wavers, and all they do is just wave. What kind of steps do you teach? What I do, I teach the basic steps of break dancing, because no one person can teach break dancing completely because, as I said, it is in the dancer's imagination. What I do is teach the basic steps of the break dancing and then the students take it from there. It's all in the imagination. Thank you for talking with us, Ms. Bagley. This is Anna Valenti reporting from News 6. Thanks, Anna. That's all for today. In fact, that's all for this year. We'd like to thank all the schools that have participated in making New 6 a success this year. We hope you will join us next fall when New 6 will be brought to you again by 6th graders from schools in northwestern Ohio and northeastern Indiana. Until then, have a great summer.